Good morning, everybody. And welcome to Christ Church for worship on this beautiful day that God has given us. For those of you who might not know me and for visitors, uh, my name is Jimmy Barnhill and I will be leading you in worship this morning. And uh, by way of announcements, I have some things I'd like to lift up to you. First of all, <clears throat> I'd like to draw your attention to the announcements that are printed in the bulletin. I'm not going to mention every one of them, but they're all important. I do want to, to you know, highlight this. There's a job opening here. And uh, we're looking for a part-time church treasurer. And so there's some details given in the, in the bulletin. If you are interested or if you know of someone who might be interested to pass the information along to you. Um, we have CSA luncheon that's meeting on, uh, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be meeting on August 14th at 11. And uh, I believe Winston Hall, you know, is going to be the entertainer. He's going to be the speaker and I know it's going to be good because Winston always has something very interesting to share. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that in the NOFX, uh, there's sign-up uh, available for taking pictures for the church directory. Uh, the pictures will uh, be, at, be here at the church on September 6th, 7th, and 8th. So you need to sign up for a time to come and get you your picture made or you, you with your family so that it can be put in the uh, church directory. I believe there will be a makeup time, but I don't know what that is right now. I guess that information will come at a later time. But try to make it. Uh, <clears throat> it's very important that your picture get in the directory because a lot of times I, I see people and I don't know their name and I'd like to know a little bit more about them. And the only opportunity for me to do that is to look in the directory. So uh, be sure to do that. It's an important thing and it's something that I have used widely over the years. Uh, let's see. Today, of course, is Holy Communion, and I wish you could see the view that I have here standing in this place. There is a sea of red bags, uh, of food for common ground, and I am told that we are a major supplier for this ministry of the United Methodist Church in the Cedar Grove area where common ground is located. So this is, this is no small deal. This is very important. Uh, we're dependent on now. And my goodness, your heart pours out with generosity as I look at this sea of red bags. Uh, is there anything possibly that I forgot that needs to be lifted up in the way of announcements? Well, if not, then um, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we, as we get the choral into it. Would you please stand if you are able, and uh, we will do the call to worship. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Not to us, Lord, 
Not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn is I Come With Joy. It's number 617 in the hymnal and on the screen. We'll be singing verses 1 through 4. Firm our faith with the affirmation of faith. The, the, the uh, Apostles' Creed, it's on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. Paul was crucified, dead, and buried. The, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. children down to join Miss Michelle for the children's sermon and while they're coming I'd like to say something here you know this is not just a children's sermon if you pay attention you're going to get a blessing too because uh, Miss Michelle always has a blessing for the children and for everyone good morning girls Okay, so this morning I brought some Play-Doh with me. How many of y'all like to play with Play-Doh? Yeah. You can make all kinds of fun things with it, can't you? Yeah. You can mold it. You're right. You can make anything you want. I used to like to make little foods with my Play-Doh, like apples and bananas and... <coughs> Yeah, I know you can squish that. Anyway, I brought with me some things that are made from clay that my daughter made in high school. She took a pottery class, and they're made from clay similar to this, but it, these are, uh, this is a beautiful bowl. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, and then you could eat out of it. And then this is a pretty vase that you can put flowers in. Yeah. 
So anyway, these are made um, from clay similar to this, and it gets hard, and it's, you can make it really pretty. <coughs> yes, so do you know what somebody's called that makes pottery for a living, like that that's their job? Um, it's, here's a hint, the, they make pottery, so they're called a potter, okay? Yes, yeah, so the potter takes clay and makes things with them. So the Bible tells us that God is a potter and that we are the clay. You know what that means? No. It means that God created each one of us, right? Just like we can create things with clay. Not only did he create us the way we look, but he molds us in different ways. He molds us to be kind and loving to others. He molds us to be um, forgiving and loving to everybody. Right now, he's molded you all to be students in school, but later when you grow up, you'll be molded to be something different, like maybe a teacher or a doctor or a fireman, fire girl. We never know what you're going to be. But the most important thing to remember is just like the, the potter holds the clay in his hands or her hands to make things, God holds each one of you in his hands. Isn't that cool? All the time. Right now, yeah. That's right. So let's say a prayer, and then I'm going to give each one of y'all a little pack of clay. Actually, I'm going to give you the clay right now. Yeah, here you go. So y'all pray with me, okay? Dear God, thank you for molding us. Thank you for holding us in your hand. Please help us to always love others and to love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, y'all can go back to your seats, okay? Well, I think we have cute kids, so. It's time now for our uh, <clears throat> joys and concerns. Let's start with the concerns. And I'm going to share with you some that I know of, and then later you can, uh, you can add to this list. <clears throat> First of all, hold all these people in your prayer. They're, they're Bob Batowski's had surgery on his, on his shoulder, and uh, he's, he's having a little pain. So let's, uh, let's remember Bob and hope and pray that he uh, recovers quickly and is as pain-free as possible. Let's hold Susie Thomason close in our hearts. She has finally moved her mother here from southern Florida. And Susie's mother, Margie, is at Azalea Estates. So uh, let's, let's hold all these, all the Thomason family and Miss Margie close in prayer. Pat Howard is recovering from surgery on her foot. And uh, Larry says that she's in a little bit of pain. She had hammer toe surgery, and I've had that too, so I know exactly what she's going through. Of course, Ronnie Crawford, he's with us today. He had surgery on his neck Monday, and amazingly, he's with us, and he says he's pain-free for the most part. Got a little healing to do, but we're glad to see Ronnie up and, uh, and being with us today. Ronnie Martin is at home. He had uh, his first chemo, I think, was Thursday. And uh, I'm told that Ronnie is in good spirits. He just wishes his body was as in good a shape as his spiritual self. And so let's hold Ronnie and, and Janet close in our prayers. Uh, we, let's pray for healing and let's, uh, let's pray for comfort and that God will visit them at this time. Also, I know of uh, Martha Wiltz. She is in hospice. So let's uh, hold her and her family close in prayer. There are uh, there's some private concerns, I know. Things that I don't know about and things that you don't know about. But nonetheless, there are people who have private things that are unknown to us. Let's try to, to be with these uh, thoughts of uh, as we pray for those who suffer even as we don't know about them so hold them close in your prayers 
Okay, let me hear from you. Anybody have prayer concerns? That's better, right? Thank you. Anybody else? Just, okay. Yes. Could you speak up a little bit? Okay. What about joy? Has anybody got any joys to share? Birthdays, anniversaries, or other good news? So watch out, Wall. <laughs> Less. Say that again. I didn't hear that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Birthday. Piper will be nine. Anybody else? From here. Go. I don't know if this is a joy or a concern. Joe's dad, Stanley Carroll, is moving back here from Houston today. And he will be at the Styles Apartments at the Glen. So Joe will probably have his hands full. <laughs> <laughs> He's 95. <laughs> well, God bless him. <laughs> and and y'all. <laughs> Anybody else? Does he have his keys? Well, let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning with contrite hearts. We pray that the Holy Spirit will come in and fill our hearts with your love and also that you would, you would help us to receive whatever special message you want us to hear and what goes on here today in our worship. Whether it be through the hymns, through the prayers, through the affirmation, through the Holy Communion or the sermon or the liturgy, speak to our hearts and may we have open hearts to hear. But first of all, we want to give thanks. We thank you for your abiding love. And we thank you that you are always with us, regardless of what we are confronted with in life. We can have some serious events that happen in our life. As mentioned this morning with all of the concerns, there are many who have had, had surgeries. But we give you thanks for the success that these procedures have brought about in people who formerly were suffering with pain and, and, and other infirmities. But now, through the modern medicine and through your guidance of the hands of these people who, who do all these medical wonders, we have now people who are pain-free who formerly suffered. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for that. There are some who are still suffering. Some are near death. Some are, some are confronted with continued serious treatment for their ailments. And we pray that you would be with them and we pray that you would be with their families and we pray that you would be with all of those medical people who attend them, that they will be doing their top-notch job and that it will be effective in bringing healing and freedom from pain and suffering. But most of all, God, we pray that your, 
her heavenly presence would be with these people who we've mentioned who are suffering. There are many joys too. I mean, many of these people who have been suffering are, are getting better. And then in the midst of all of this, we have, we have birthdays and we have anniversaries and we have happy events, some that are not even mentioned. And we give you thanks for these joys in life. Let us not take them, uh, you know, without serious consideration because they're gifts from you and we need to see them that way. Please be with us in this service and please be with you as we receive the bread and the wine and may your presence be May we be aware of your presence in these offerings and that we receive your love and your blessing in ways that may surprise us, but keep us open to that, Lord, because your Holy Spirit is with us. And I give you thanks. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is from Romans 8, 26 through 30. I'm going to start at uh, Romans at the 24th verse, and I've already lost my place. Hear these words of Paul. Some of the most beautiful words that Paul wrote for us. They bring they brought me comfort time and time again. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that He might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward for the offer court.
Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with grateful hearts for all the many gifts you have given us. But your goodness inspires in us to want to give back to you and to the ministry of this church and for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Please, Lord, accept these gifts. Whether they be big or small, we know that you will take them and magnify them just like the the two loaves and the five loaves and the two fishes that the little boy gave on the mountainside. And you multiplied that gift to feed more than 5,000 people. May you take our gifts and magnify them, Lord. We give them with love in our heart to you. For it's in the name of Christ that I pray. Amen.
Please be seated. If you would turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 18. Be reading from verses 1 through 12. Jeremiah 18, 1 through 12. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the potter's shop, and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Then the Lord gave me this message, O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. Therefore, Jeremiah, go and warn all Judah and Jerusalem. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. I am planning disaster for you instead of good. So turn from your evil ways, each of you, and do what is right. But the people replied, don't waste your breath. We will continue to live as we want to, stubbornly following our own evil desires. The Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds, may they be truly and utterly faithful to Your Word, O Lord our God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. And we pray today that You would mold us and shape us and make us who You are calling us to be. Help us to see the words of grace that You have for us today. And help us to hear the call that You have on our lives. Shape us according to Your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there was one particular verse in the Scripture this week that really just kind of it kind of just stuck in my gut this week and in my mind and in my spirit and just over and over and over again this, this, this verse uh, affected me in a way that I didn't expect it to. I mean, I've, I've probably preached on this passage at least a dozen times, maybe two dozen uh, in my years of ministry. Uh, but it's, it's a very famous passage. Is there anybody here who hasn't? heard this passage before. Um, uh, Matthew Barron said he had never heard it before in the other service this morning, but uh, most of us have heard of this passage, have have heard sermons on it before, and, and, and for some reason there was a particular verse in it this time that it just kind of kept nagging and stabbing and jabbing at me all week. And, and, and that, that, that verse was this. It, it, it was... Uh, But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped, so he crushed it into a lump of clay and started over. And that image of the clay coming together and bringing brought up and then crushing it onto the wheel just kind of stuck into my brain this week. And I I guess it kind of bothered me uh, that that is what happened to the clay. So God spoke to Jeremiah, and if you've been reading through Jeremiah with us, you notice that God would speak to Jeremiah through everyday, ordinary events in Jeremiah's life. I mean, uh, there was he talked to him about a branch of an almond tree, and uh, about a pot of boiling water, and a rotten linen cloth, and of course, this potter's house. And, and uh, then they talked about shattered clay jars. Uh, used that to speak to him. And then there was two baskets of figs in a market. He went down to the market and saw 
saw the two baskets of figs and God spoke to him that way. And then a yoke on an animal, uh, God spoke to him that way. And, and then he also uh, spoke to him with a couple of large rocks. And, and, and I can relate a lot to Jeremiah because God kind of speaks to me sometimes in that same way. I'll be uh, in a market or something and see uh, a couple of uh, kids playing and God will speak to me that way or, or uh, just a little verse here or there, something that I see on TV or a picture or the internet and, and, and uh, God kind of relates it to, to what's going on. And, and God chose to send Jeremiah down to the potter's house to speak to him uh, about what was going on in the nation of Israel, of Judah, uh, more specifically. And, and if you've been reading along, you remember that Babylon was coming to uh, destroy the nation of Judah and, and the, the uh, society was deteriorating economically, politically, spiritually. Uh, there was wars going on all around. People were being brought into captivity. Uh, Israel was brought into captivity uh, earlier with all of that. And... Um, People were God's word was was it was deemed offensive to them. I mean, they they didn't want to listen to what God had to say, and, and the nation of Judah had turned so far away from God. I mean, can you imagine? Here is Jeremiah. He speaks to these people, and he says, "You know what? If if you know God has promised to take care of you, God's promised to bless the nation of Judah and Israel. God's promised that, but if you don't." Listen to God. If you don't do what God is calling you to do, if you don't turn from your evil ways, God's going to destroy you. Now, I imagine that if God came to me or if God came to you, I'm sure that if God spoke to you and said, you know what, if you're doing evil, you need to stop right now. How many of you would look God square in the face and say, I'm going to do my own thing, God. I'm going to, I don't care what you have to say. You may think it's evil. But I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. And what is the reply of the people here? If you look in verse 12, I mean, he says, Don't waste your breath. I don't think I would tell God that. How many of you would tell God that? Uh, we will continue to live as we want to, stubbornly following our own evil desires. I mean, can you imagine of people telling God, you know what, God? Shut your mouth. I'm going to do what I want to do. And you know what the funny thing is? We do that to God without knowing it sometimes. We, we choose to live our own life, our own way. We disregard God's Word. We say, ah, I'm going to live out my... This is my life. I'm going to live it my own way. And instead, who is the clay on the potter's wheel. It's the nation of Judah, but we are the clay and we are in God's hands. But what we do a lot of times is we put God on the potter's wheel and we say, God, you get in, get in the image I want you to be. You be the God that I want. You, 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 I'm going to form you in my image and I'm going to follow that God. And not the true God. I, I don't want to be on the potter's wheel. I don't want you. I don't want to be in your hands. Uh, and we basically do what the, the nation of Judah is and said, God, be quiet. I'm going to live my life my own way. I know better than you know. I know what's best for my life. I know the way I should live my life. And, and you don't. Well, as Jeremiah is in the potter's house, he sees the potter making the clay and, and making it into a, a certain pot. Uh, but the, the master potter notices that the pot isn't working out the way it says. It says, uh, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. And, and the potter, uh, the, the Hebrew word there, uh, means the pot was really being made for a specific purpose. There was a purpose for that pot. Uh, and that pot wasn't turning out the way that the pot should. And so the potter noticed that it wasn't turning out the way that it should, so it scratched it together, smashed it, and smashed it back down to start over again. Uh, and Jeremiah tells the people, you know what? God can do that for you. 
God can change this nation from a nation of evil and make it into a nation of good. If we'll turn away from our evil ways, God will do that. But the people said, nah, we're going to do it on our own. Well, as this, this kind of stuck in my spirit this week, I decided that I was going to go down to the potter's house and watch some potters make pottery. Have any of y'all ever watched potters make pottery before? Uh, it, it's a fascinating... Um, Fascinating. It's, I mean, it's beautiful how they make uh, pottery. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, and so I got on YouTube and watched them make pottery because I didn't think there was a potter in Shreveport somewhere. Um, I, I visited my cousin Ken at Centenary when he was taking pottery um, at Centenary so he could get a good grade and he made a B minus. Um, <laughs> I visited him in there. But so I decided I was going to go watch some, some master pot. And it was interesting that, you know, you could turn on a video and within about 10, 15 seconds, you could tell whether or not that person knew what they were doing or not. I mean, you could look at that video and go, turn that one off because that guy doesn't know anything about pottery because they would start and the pot would go and all kinds of, of crazy things. And, and, but, but the master potters, Man, it, it was, it's like, I mean, it's art. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, it's magical how they can just put their hands on that clay and the pot will just go up and it'll turn in the way they want to and they'll stick their finger in the middle, bring the pot up equally all the way around. It's just beautiful to see uh, how those, the, that pottery is made and, and how that person works on it. You know, and I would be watching the, the potter uh, making that pot and, and it would be beautiful. I'd go, oh man, that is so beautiful. Stop right there. And they would move their hands in a different way and they'd make the pot into something completely different that I had no clue. I thought they were making a vase, but then it turned out to be something totally different. And, and I thought the vase was going to be this tall and then the pot started to come out this way. And like, oh, that is beautiful. Stop right there. And, and they would get some... some, some uh, little piece of string and they would cut through the top and they would place that top on another way and they would make that in a certain way and then they'd put it back on the pot. I'd go, how in the world could you do something like that? And then they would put those two pieces together and make it come out and it would be just beautiful on how the, and I'd say stop right there you oh that is perfect don't do anything else and then they would they would start shaping a little different thing and they'd get a little little piece of wood or something and they would kind of go into the side of the pot and would make it do different things and they would go up and down and around with that little piece of wood or whatever it was and then I mean it was just amazing to watch and I'd say that's it stop right there and, and, and it's beautiful it can't get any better and then they'd pull something else out and they would make a little handle on this side and they would shape it in a certain way and then they make a handle on this side and they put a handle here I'm like, oh that's beautiful stop right there and then they would do, and they would just keep working at it until it was what they wanted the pot to be. And I, I had no clue where the end product was going to be. And I wish they would have stopped at the very beginning when it looked a certain way. But by the time that the, the master potter got finished, it was a masterpiece, a work of art that I could have only hoped that this person could have come up with, uh, with that. And I mean, it was amazing to watch these potters. And, and, and it's the same way in our own lives. So I mean, we can decide to just be that lump of clay. And never allow God to, to put ourselves in God's hands to allow God to shape us and mold us for that purpose that God created us for. Because God created each and every one of us for a purpose. For a specific purpose. And God is molding us and shaping us and making us be uh, what God wants us to be. Uh, and, and, you know, it was fascinating to listen to the person talk about how they could feel as they put their hand in the pot, they could feel that there was a bubble in the clay or, or a piece of air pocket in there. And they knew that if... Do you know what happens if you put a, a pot into a kiln? A kiln is what you fire that clay into that makes it hard and, and, and allows it to stay in the shape that it is. If you put a pot in a kiln that's got an air bubble in it, what's going to happen? It's going to explode. And it's not just going to ruin that pot, but it ruins every other pot 
that is in the kiln with it because it blows up and that clay goes onto all the other pots and, and disfigures them and, and, and there's nothing you can do to fix the rest of those pots because that pot has exploded and destroyed all of it. Um, and, and the reason that the clay is smashed together and hit back down onto the pot is to get rid of all of those imperfections and, and all of those <coughs> problems in that clay that's going to ruin it and destroy it. And so for that piece of clay to be brought together and smashed and start over again, it's not really a bad thing, is it? It's really grace. It's really God wanting to continue to make us who God is calling us to be and to do. And if we allow, if we put our lives in God's hands, if we put our lives in God's hands and allow our lives to be shaped and molded by the master potter, then what that purpose that God has for us will be made out finally and totally and completely. That passage from Romans that uh, we read earlier uh, in the service, it says, God causes all things to come to good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Right? All of us probably know that part of the Scripture. But we stop there because we say, oh, God causes all things good to happen. And He does. God causes the good things to happen in our lives for those who are called according to His purpose. And if you keep reading, what is the purpose that we are called to be? What are we called to be? We are called to be like His Son, Jesus Christ. And that is the purpose of all the shaping and molding and creating is so that our lives look just like the life of Jesus Christ. And if we allow ourselves to be molded and shaped in those imperfections to be taken out of our life, and if we repent of those times that we turn away from God, and, and we allow God to speak to us and continually mold and shape and change and, and get rid of those rough edges and, and, and add uh, good, uh, loving parts of the Holy Spirit into our lives, then we can be just like His Son. If we allow ourselves to be put in God's hands. Instead of making God in our image, we allow God to make us back into the image that God created us for. And we allow God to help us to be what God calls us to be. All of us have a purpose to live out our life to glorify God and to become just like His Son, Jesus Christ. It's a process that takes forever until we go meet the potter face to face. We don't get to jump off of the potter's wheel and say, I'm done! Well, you can actually. You can tell God, God, I've had enough. I don't want to be changed anymore. But you won't be what God has specifically made you to be. Will you allow the potter's hands to mold you and shape you and change you and make you to be all that God created you to be. And if you will, then the purpose that God created you for will beautify the world and all those around you. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we confess that it's not always fun to be on the potter's wheel. We get to see our imperfections and our, the ways that we don't please You and the ways we don't please others. But Lord, we thank You that You never stop molding, shaping, changing, transforming, challenging, making us into who You called us to be. We can't wait to look to that day that we look just like Your Son, Jesus Christ, and love the world in that same way. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, open your hymnals to page 12 or follow along on the screen with us as we join together in our communion liturgy. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him 
who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law. We have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may we silently pray and ask God for forgiveness of those times that we have turned away from Him and have done evil. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to You, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We put our lives into Your hands to allow You to mold us and make us into that form that You are calling us to be. To be the people that You know that we can be. To love the world in the way that You love the world and to love our neighbor as You love our neighbor. Mold us and shape us today and every day to be who You are calling us to be. And if we need to start over, we thank You that we can start over today through the love and blood of Your Son, Jesus Christ. And so with Your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise Your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mind, heaven and earth are full of Your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are You and blessed is Your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to Your church. You delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. And You made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took the bread, He blessed it, and He broke it. He said... Take, eat this, all of you. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to his Father in heaven, he blessed it, and he said, Take, drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we now offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ so that we can be the body and blood of Jesus Christ for a broken, hurting world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would those coming to help with communion please come forward now?
is not a Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. Anyone who's willing to say yes to living out your life according to His ways is invited to come. You do not have to be a United Methodist. You do not have to be a member of this church. You just have to be a sinner saved by Jesus' love and His grace and want to be in the Master's hands to be molded and shaped and changed by His grace. Everyone can come and be a part. Uh, after you've taken communion, we'll be taking it by intinction. What that means is we'll hand you a piece of bread. You will then dip that bread into the cup and then eat it. Uh, after you have done that, uh, you're invited to pray at the altar for as long as you like. Any money that is left at the altar goes to UMCOR uh, today uh, to help uh, tragedies that happen throughout the world. Uh, especially that money will probably be going to the wildfires uh, that are happening now all over uh, the United States. Um, come, all is prepared.
During our last hymn, you're invited to come to the altar and pray longer if you would like. If you'd like me to pray with you, come tell me. Um, hopefully I won't get in trouble. I'm going to change the last hymn. <laughs> you let me do that, Charles? <laughs> to, uh, you're going to go one page over to 382 to have thine own way, Lord. You don't, I don't, they don't, they can use a hymnal, they're smart. <laughs> you can get a hymnal out, go to 382. Um, and we're going to sing that one. Uh, is that good, Charles? You got that one? Okay. So we're going to sing that one. 382. In your bulletin it says 381. Just go one page, that's one page later. To have that on way, Lord. And we're going to sing that one. Um, uh, let's all stand to sing. If you're visiting with us this morning, we're glad you're here. I'm Pastor Mark, one of the pastors here. If you'd like to connect with our congregation in a special way, you can text HELLO to 318-225-7229 and uh, you will be connected with us uh, in a special way. Uh, I want to thank all of you all for all the red bags that you have brought uh, this morning and striped bags uh, and some other bags with that. Um, are we taking these out after the service? Yes. All right. So if we need your help uh, after the service is over, if you'll get these bags and go out to the covered uh, walkway, we'll place those in the truck to go. But let's go into the world allowing the Master Potter to have his way with our lives, allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us, change us, and mold us and make us into who God knows that we can be and who we really long to be if we were really truthful for ourselves. May that Holy Spirit and may the potter, the master potter, mold us and shape us to be just like His Son, Jesus Christ. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ we go. Amen. Amen.